All right, so today we're going to go into part two of moving rows using Google Apps Script. If you didn't see part one, I'm going to have it linked in the description, and it would be helpful if you're not familiar with Apps Script to check that video out first. So today we're going to go to the next level. I'm going to show you how to move rows if the value in the dropdown is not the same as the tab names. Uh, we'll look at moving based on a checkbox being selected. We'll look at adding a date and or a timestamp when you move the data. We'll look at sending an email alert when a row gets moved. And then we'll also look at triggers where the script will work for anyone using the um, Google Sheet without having to authorize a script for each person. So let's go ahead and dive right in. We'll start with what we have set up right here where the status does not exactly tie to the tab name. So for example here, um, we have leads and the tab name is new leads, prospects, we have called working, sales is sold, and lost is churn. So if we go to our app script, we'll go ahead and run through this. So we have the bare bones from our last script from the first video we did. And so let's go ahead and get our basic variable set up. So I'm gonna do the spreadsheet. Source sheet, and number rows. Let's go ahead and get all of them. Fourteen rows now. All right, so now we need to get our target sheet. But so far, we don't know what the name is. So the value is not equal to uh, blank. So we're, we're looking at the value could be one of these four. And so one way we could tie it, we could do it manually. So we could do, for example, in this case, um, we could do if value equals to prospects. And then we can set this manually and say uh, working and continue there on. I think we can just do a pen row data. Something like this. And let's see if that works here. Just like that. Um, but this is exactly how we want to work. Um, this works if you only have a few, maybe. Um, let's do a more resilient way of doing this. Um, let's go ahead and actually delete, probably, source sheet, delete, row. When we move it, just to make it a little more easy to track here. Okay, so instead of doing this value and then setting this manually, let's use an object. Let's just call it tabs. So notice this is a different array. Array is, you know, let array equals, and we use these square brackets. This one we use curly brackets. So the difference is, if you haven't used an object before, a object, you use what's called keys and values. So we're going to be able to use this to tie things together. So for example, if we have the tab names, we can um, put the tab name here as the key, or I'm, I'm sorry, this would be the status dropdown as the key, and then the tab name as the value. And so let's go ahead and populate this real quick. Uh, 
All right. So this is all well and good. Now we have to figure out how to get this into here. So what we can do is make a reference to look up what we have our value inside this table. And so let's just reset this to just not equal to blank. And instead, what we're going to do here, the way we reference this is tabs val. So let me just show you real quick here. Let's do let val equal leads. Tabs val console log target tab. Oh, let's just check this out real quick. As you can see there, it comes up with new leads. So we're looking inside this object and we're passing in this value of leads. And so it's going to look for the key of leads and then return the value. So if we change this to prospects, this should return working. And there we go. Hopefully that makes sense. We'll try to keep it plugged in as we go along and explain what we have going on. But let's go ahead and move forward for now. So now we have our target sheet and we can do the same thing. So this should work now. So we hit prospects and it got that moved over. All right. So um, one thing I noticed, I'm having these three show up there. Um, let's go ahead and just remove those. I don't need these check boxes here. So let's go ahead and move them more. There we go. Now we can remove these columns. All right, let's go to sales. Now we're all right, except for one thing we have here. And this is what we'll look at next. So when I go here, I have sold date. I don't really need the status anymore. And so um, let's look at if it's going to sales or sold here, let's add a timestamp or a date stamp. This is often a very useful thing to do. And so what we'll do here is we will have one condition. Um, sales, we want it to function differently. So let's do and val not equal to sales. So let's go ahead and copy this. And we want to do a special functionality value is equal to sales. So I'm going to go ahead and leave Let's see here. Get that one down there. All right. So let's go ahead and just leave this in here for now. Um, even though technically we could just put in sold. Um, let's leave it there for now. So instead, if we look at our source data, our status is our first column. And so if instead of getting all um, all of the rows basically, or all the columns of data. Let's just go ahead and trim this down. So let's just start with number two column. And then let's add that date. So for that date, often what I'll do is I'll just do let today equals, um, you can do new date, right? Um, let's go ahead and just show you what new date looks like here. Let today equals new date. and run the test. So we get this long date string, has all the extra data. Now what if we just want just a simple date? We can use this utilities format date. And then you can see this pop up, we get that new date, populates our date, we can do time zone and format. So time zone, go ahead and put central, and then we can put in 
a string to supply the date. So this would be month, day, and year. So if we run this one, I can see we get a simple 10, 19, 22. So if we want to add the hours, there we go. So that gets that's the string we're looking for. All right, so let's go ahead and grab this. Throw this one up here. And now let's go ahead and add it into our data. So data unshift, we'll add the beginning. Let's do today. And, and now we should be working. So if we go to our sold, we have this Verona Wilson. Let's go ahead and get this back in here. All right. And let's just add a sale amount here and move it to sold. So now you can see we have our sold date timestamp. And so if you just want the date, we can just trim this part off and it'll just be the date, which is what we'll do. All right, so that's how we can add a date or a timestamp. Now let's look at um, moving based on a checkbox. So we'll just use it for from this new leads tab. Let's go ahead and get rid of this for now. Just get like this, simplify. So we'll just make this status again, just for now. All right. So this one. What we're looking at on new leads is I want to move to working, if we check it over here, sold or churn. So what we'll do, we can do it uh, probably the quickest way is just to grab this column number. So if we do column, see that's 12. So we do is 12 and value is equal to true. Then here, we probably just want to go ahead and put this in manually. So we'll do working. And now if we check one of these. Let's see what happened here. Oh, it's not text. There we go, let's try this again. There we go. Oh, that was Sheila, there we go. Uh, Sheila Divenport. Now let's go ahead and grab another one. So Davy Hunter, let's go ahead and throw that prospects. Oh, I can remember here. There we go. And so that's how we can do that. We can add it here. Let's do another one. 13, it'll go to sold. And 14, we'll go to churn. So let's go ahead and check this out. So Juliana. Let's see if I can get this here. Juliana goes to sold. There we go. It's on the wrong row. And then let's put Chelsea to churn. There we go. All right. So that's how we can do it based on a column. And this will work the same thing. If you had a drop down yes or no, you would just change this to string yes or whatever value you need it to be. All right, let's look at two more things real quick. First off, let's look at sending an email alert. So let's go ahead and just keep this checkbox for now. And first off, we need to figure out, um, let's say we're gonna send the email alert uh, 
let's just put a sample email here. And maybe we only want it to go through if it's sold. So we can just add it simply here at the end. Gmail app, send email, new email. Subject is um, new sale. And we do body of new sale to now let's turn this into template text. So I'm using this back um, tick instead of the normal one. And then I can use this template. So let's say a new sale. And then we can add data and zero and then one, two. Let's just do that. All right. So that's all we need to do. One thing to keep in mind is we already authorized the script. Now, if you add a Gmail, you're gonna to have to reauthorize. So a quick way to do that is just hit run again. It doesn't matter which function. Hit review permissions and go ahead and authorize that. I'm not gonna bother with that right at the moment um, since we don't really need demo the email actually going through. One thing I wanted to mention real quick is, so in the last video we mentioned using this on edit, um, when you first authorize this, all you have to do is run this and then it'll ask for permissions. As soon as you do, this will work for you. The one thing to keep in mind is this won't work for just anyone using the sheet. It'll only work for anyone who's authorized the script. So if you want this to work for anyone, you want anyone to be able to come in here and select this and it move to the appropriate tab or whatever other actions you wanted to do, like send an email alert and stuff like that you're gonna to have to use a trigger. And so when you use a trigger, we're just gonna go ahead and change this function name, uh, maybe something like move rows. And then um, currently now, it's not gonna do anything. If I click working, nothing's gonna happen because our on edit trigger is no longer there. So what I gotta do is click on our clock icon, click new trigger, select the appropriate function. And then from here, from spreadsheet, we want on edit. And this will capture any edits that are made from anyone using it. And so here it's gonna ask me to do the authorization now uh, because I added that Gmail script. So there's the Gmail, hit allow. And now it's there. Google sometimes has this flaw where this still is up there, but um, now you can see our triggers there. And now if we go try to use this, it should get moved over just like that. All right, and that will now work for anyone when you use this trigger. That's it for today. Let me know if I missed anything that you guys want covered, um, if there's any other use, use cases, and uh, I'll look at incorporating it into the next video. Thanks very much. Tune back again later.